What's going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Today's episode, we take a look at microphones. We've got the Shure SM57 and the SE Electronics V7X. Now, the SM57 has been a classic microphone for decades, um, and it has been my primary microphone in my ISO cabinet. So that's what all of my recordings have been with. However, today we're switching them. We're going to move both microphones to the SE V7X. So we're going to compare the two of them and see how well they sound uh, as a direct comparison to them. Uh, most of this is just because I just wanted something different, you know, a different flavor and a different take on things. Um, not that there's anything wrong with the 57. I find it a little harsh at times, but, um, you know, we'll pull up some, some data sheets and see kind of what the manufacturers say about them. And we'll do some direct comparisons in the video. So let's get into it, shall we? All right, you guys, let's go ahead and kind of take a dive into what we've got going on. I have, we've got the DI signals done. We've got the recordings done. And, um, you know, we'll start with the SM57 and uh, we'll just kind of listen to it and see how it sounds. It's very typical of that SM57 sound. It's very clean, crisp, you know, kind of bright in that top end, uh, aggressive or, you know, in your face kind of sounding. It's it's really present uh, in that sound. So now we're going to take a listen to uh, the V7X and see how it sounds. All right, so the V7X, um, to me, uh, it's a little flatter sounding. It, it doesn't have any real highs or peaks. It's not really adding a lot of character to the audio source. It's it's very neutral sounding. Um, you know, 57s are typically known for being pretty harsh, uh, and I think that's because they have a spike uh, right around, you know, somewhere in that five to six, 7,000 range. Uh, I think, and I could be wrong, I'm going to try and find the data sheets and we'll kind of overlook it in a minute. But um, I kind of think that there's a spike in the EQ. I think it's pretty flat and then it kind of jumps up a little bit and then it takes a real, real dive. Uh, so I think that's kind of what's going on with the 57 and, and I could be wrong. So let's go ahead and listen to it again and we'll play them back to back. That speaks for itself, I think. Um, you can really see how much chimier or bright, um, much top end there is on that SM57. And I think that's one of the big characteristics of that, of that microphone. I think that's really what makes it shine. Um, depending upon the speaker and the context you're using, again, the 57 is just a, a classic all-around microphone. Uh, and they're very hard to beat for that reason. So now let's take a listen to uh, the Dirty Channel stuff. Um, we've got, let me make sure everything else is muted. We've got the, uh, SM57 first and then the V7X. Again, both of these microphones were positioned in the exact same place. All right. So what you're hearing, uh, again, is going to be the both microphones on both speakers at the same time. So it's pretty blended as you would hear it as if you were listening to, you know, my, my demo videos and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and listen. I guess that might help if I uh, set the loop up for the right thing, huh? Mm -hmm. 
All right, so you can hear it, in my opinion, right out the gate. Uh, it's a little harsh in the top end. It's, um, you know, that 5,000, 4,000, somewhere in that range, there's a, a real spike. And I think that's what a lot of people refer to as that harsh top end. I don't think it's, it's not always a bad thing by any means. I think it's just in how you want to context, you know, how you're using the, you know, the sound you're listening or what you're hearing, uh, you know, how you're wanting to record it. So... Let's go ahead and check out the V7X. All right, I, th I think it's pretty noticeable, uh, even with that slight gap between them, but the V7X definitely, to me, sounds a lot flatter sounding. It, it doesn't have any spikes or peaks in it anywhere. Uh, the, the top end is slightly lifted, but it's not overpowering any major frequency. So let's listen to them back to back and see how they sound. <laughs> That's it. Let's uh let's kind of see if I can find the data sheets and I will get those uh we'll get those pulled up real quick. All right, so I've got uh, a couple of spec sheets. This one here is actually from Sweetwater uh on the SM57. They did not have one on the SE Electronics. So I went to the manufacturer's website and uh this is kind of what what I've got going on here. So I'm going to use that to kind of compare a lot of what we're going to see uh just kind of looking for some general stuff the frequency response range so on the on the sm57 the range is going to be between 40 hertz and 15,000 hertz it's kind of really the only thing i'm personally going to be looking for at this i mean you guys can see it pull it up whatever and i want to look at the pattern of the cardioid now this is a standard cardioid pattern uh it shows you you know, each dotted line represents a certain frequency pattern. And then over here, this is a graph uh, that kind of shows um, overall. Let's see if I can make that a little larger for you guys to see it. And there you go. So, all right, so here's the 57. So from 40 hertz, which I'm guessing is going to be right here. It's coming in at, you know, pretty low on the spectrum and then it goes up. So you're at about 200 hertz. It's kind of when it starts to level off. Here's a slight dip in the low mids and then it looks like it goes off pretty level. And then right here, it starts to go up. So you're talking right around 2000 hertz. Uh, it goes up here at plus five, probably around plus six, give or take seven. And what is that? So right around that five to 6,000 hertz, again, that top end, I think this right here is what people are hearing when they say it's harsh. Uh, so then let's go ahead and compare uh, the frequency on this. So the frequency response range on the V7X is actually 40 hertz to 19,000 versus, uh, what did I say it was over here? 40 to 15. So there's actually more top end frequency available on the SM or on the uh, V7X 
Uh, so you would think that would essentially make it brighter, but they're both looking to be 40 hertz. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at their graph. Uh, so theirs is actually kind of nice. Uh, so basically from 40 hertz is probably right about here. Again, it's coming in probably around minus 15. And it's cool because it shows you at two inches from the speaker or the source, you know, that's where it would be six inches from the speaker and then two foot. Now my my placement in the ISO cab is about six inches, give or take, uh, six to seven, you know, somewhere in that. So I'm gonna go with this dotted line here for the low end part of it, uh, just because it's in the ISO cab. I have to kind of guess and assume, and I hate really assuming, but I'm gonna guess that is the frequency for, um, try to line this up with, you know, let me, let me do this let me move that over here um so here's our frequency range on the sm57 and again let's go back and look at the um v7x so we're gonna go with this one here so 40 hertz you're coming in you know right around that minus five uh this looks to be at about minus 12. um so it's kind of a little louder on the low end uh, it looks to go up and above, so there is a boost on the low end, but realistically, we're going to call that the proximity effect because, you know, the closer you are to the source, the more low end. So this is kind of be, this is going to kind of be a false positive, so to speak. Um, so we'll just kind of guess it's somewhere in between that, but um, what is that, 100 hertz? And of course, like I said, we don't know where this is. You know how far they were from the speaker or the source so that's all fine and dandy but if you look at the upper end right which seems to be the kind of the same there's a big hump here you're going up past five so you're talking you know six maybe seven dbs and this one it's not quite five pretty close to five but there's actually a dip so there's a slight cut on the V7X uh, scoop, I guess you could say, on that five to six K Hertz. So whereas the SM57 goes up, the V7 cuts it out. And I think that's why it sounds a little flatter, not as harsh. Uh, it doesn't sound as quite as bold or in your face as well because of that. Um, but you can kind of adjust that in post EQ. I don't really care for the most part. I think the V7X is much flatter sounding. So anyways, uh, what is this, 10K, so right about here. See, both of those are going to be right about the peak of a 5K hertz, or the 5 plus 5 dB. And this one levels off, so this is 9K, is 5, we'll call it 5. So it looks like right after 9, 9K, it just kind of drops. Whereas... Yeah, so the V7X still has more top-end information going uh, in that upper frequencies that cut out at 19,000, you know, which is somewhere in this ballpark. Hopefully you're able to see it. So that kind of will give you guys a little information as far as why these microphones sound so different. And if we look at the polar patterns, um, you know, again, the SM57 is a cardioid pattern and it, the V7X is a super cardioid. I don't know how much of a difference that really is going to make. Now, one thing to note is that the sensitivity rating on this is minus 54. Uh, and I think it was the same on the one for Shure's SM57. Uh, minus 56. So it is a little quieter. So the uh, V7X is going to be a slightly louder microphone. You're not going to need not quite as much gain. Probably, you know, that's probably two or three dBs difference tops. You know, so maybe that's part of the characteristics of that microphone as well. So anyways, uh, you know, thanks for watching, checking out the video. And um, there is the Sekhmet Overdrive. We were using that for the sound path or the uh, signal into the reamp. And uh, yeah, anyways, thanks for watching. Tell me in the comments below what you guys thought overall. I'll see you in the next one.